In today's class, we're going to go over the basics of the relation model and then we're going to see like the ERs that we constructed or we learned how to uh, make ERs in the last uh, few lectures. How do we take those and um, transform into a design um, of a database? Like how do you go about practically making uh, databases that you can implement in softwares like SQL uh, from that design? So taking the design a step forward and converting it into the relational model. So let's start. So we know that the, like the relational model basically represents data in the form of tables. So the relational model is based on mathematical theory and therefore has uh, solid theoretical foundations behind it. However, uh, we only uh, like need a few simple concepts to describe uh, the relational model so that we can understand uh, the model and use it even by uh, those like us that are unfamiliar with the underlying theory. So in this class, we're not going to discuss like the theory, uh, like how is it mathematical, but believe me, it is. So uh, uh, how do we use it? So that's our basic purpose in this class. So a table, so starting from a table, so um, like table is the most basic construct in the relational model. Right, so a table is made up of columns and rows. So a row describes a single entity. So the property of a table is that there are no um, rows that are repeated in the relational model. Okay, first. And a row describes a different entity. For instance, if you look at this table, the first row is about John like his address, his ID, what status John has as a student. He's a freshman, sophomore, or senior. And then uh, the other rows describe data about other individuals. So each row is describing a different entity or individual, right? And then a column, the columns here are ID, name, address, and status. So column is a vertical representation of data so each column represents a single fact about each entity in this case our entities are individuals or students so the name entity uh, name column describes the names of uh, student entity okay and then similarly for address status then there is something called a domain so a domain is basically something where from which we can extract or from which a column can uh, get its values from. So for instance, what is the domain of status? It can be a student can either be a freshman, sophomore, junior or senior, right? No other values can be taken by a, an undergrad student, that's it. So that's why the domain is only these four entries. If, uh, for instance, in case of address, what could be the domain? So think about it. So address can be what? Digits, like numerics, and some text, right? So the domain of address is all the alphanumeric characters. So it can be anything. I mean, we, we don't have, we're not limited by uh, certain entries. For instance, in case of status, we only have four entries that those, uh, the column can have. In address, it can be any alphanumeric uh, entry, okay? Similarly for name, names in this case are all textual, IDs are all numerics, uh, and so on. So like I said earlier, so the relational model, the basic construct is uh, tables, rows, uh, tables, which is composed of rows and columns. 
So the three components of a relational model are this data structure that allows us uh, or that allows the data to be organized in the form of tables with rows and columns specifying uh, the values of each entry. Then a relational model uh, allows uh, or provides data manipulation and data integrity functions or it is composed of these major components. So data manipulation is like powerful operations uh, typically in our case implemented using the SQL language are used to manipulate data that is stored in the rel relations or tables. Okay, so tables another name for tables is relations hence the relational model. Okay. Uh, so powerful operations are um, like how can you insert data in a table, how can you extract data, what can you do with that data and so on. Then finally uh, the model includes mechanisms to specify like business rules that maintain the integrity of the data when they are manipulated. And we will see like what this means when we go through examples. Uh, like the data has to be in a consistent state and uh, our language or the relation model basically uh, provides us these functionalities. But for now, uh, I mean, we'll just go forward and when we go through examples, then it will become more clear. So a relation is a named two-dimensional table of data. So all relations are tables, uh, but not all tables are relations. So you have, you have to understand like, uh, you can think of a table as simply being a grid of rows and columns. Okay, so it's anything, so in Excel when you put, oh sorry, in a, a Word or Excel when you put uh, some data you have grids with rows and columns right so data in grids of rows and columns so in this sense spreadsheet can be a table but to qualify it as a relation each row needs to be unique and it implies that each row needs to have some kind of an identifier or a key associated with it okay so these are like the basic requirements for a table to qualify as a relation. So it needs to have a unique name. Every attribute value needs to be atomic, not multi-valued, meaning you cannot have uh, two names uh, for the same individual. If it is, let's say you have a nickname, uh, then it needs to have its own column. Okay, so it needs to have its that attribute needs to be placed in a different column. Like I said earlier, every row needs to be unique. Like two rows cannot have exactly the same value for all the fields. One of the fields can be different, uh, or one of the columns can be different, and then that means that the rows are not identical, right? So in in relational model, identical rows are not allowed. Then attributes or columns in the tables need to have unique names. And uh, the ordering of the rows and columns is irrelevant. It depends on the type of database, MySQL versus uh, Microsoft SQL Server versus Oracle and so on. So it depends how data is stored. Uh, when you retrieve data, even for the same database on the same platform, for instance, using MySQL, you may not get the same result every time. Why? Because how it's stored in the in the in the drive, how you how the system retrieves it, we have no control over it. Okay? Because in the relational model, it is irrelevant. And when all of these uh, uh, properties are satisfied, then we say that the relation is in first normal form meaning that the data is in first normal form we will talk about normalization and these forms in the next lecture but for now just um, understand that if you have these properties in a table then that property uh, that table can be called as a relation
and the relation is in first normal form. If these pro one of these properties is not satisfied, then it is just a simple table. It is not a relation. Okay. So relations or tables in the relation model correspond with entity types and with many to many relational types, relationship types. So people often confuse the term relation with the term relationship that we saw in the ER model. Okay, so remember there's a, a difference between relation and relationship. Okay, relation is in the relational mo uh, database model and relationship is between two entities in the ER model. Okay. So a relationship is a conceptual term that refers to how entities can relate to each other. While a relation is a table that follows those certain rules that we just defined. And it refers to the actual relational database architecture. So the ER concept of relationship will be implemented by, uh, by keys uh, that connect those database relations okay or tables so rows correspond with entity instances that we saw in the ER model and columns correspond with attributes so all those attributes of an entity will be uh, columns in the database for instance a person has a name and ID address a status as a student uh, so those are the attributes of the student so in the student table or student relation all those attributes are the columns okay then the next concept uh, so we must be able to store and retrieve a row of data in a relation right so based on the data values that are stored in that row so to achieve this goal, every uh, row needs to be identified by some kind of identifier, okay? So to achieve this goal, like every relation needs to have a primary key. So primary key is a unique identifier for that row or for any row in the table. Meaning that it is, or in other words, it is a unique identifier for the whole relation. Okay. So primary key is an attribute or a combination of attributes that uniquely identifies each row in a relation. So we de designate a primary key. How? In the ER model, we underlined it. In the relational model, we also un underline the column names or attribute names, okay? Then often we must represent the relationship between two tables or uh, uh, relations. So this is accomplished through the use of foreign keys. So a foreign key is an attribute which can again possibly a composite like a composition of two or more attributes in a relation that serves as the primary key in another relation, okay? And we will see the examples uh, of these uh, in the next slide. So this basically uh, figure is showing us like a schema for four relations at a company called Pine Valley Furniture Company, okay? So the four relations shown in this figure are customer, order, order line, and product. So the key attributes for these relations are underlined. And other important attributes are included in each relation. So notice, uh, for instance, that the primary key for order line is what? A composite key consisting of the attributes of order, ID, and product ID. Also customer ID 
uh, is a foreign key in the order relation okay so cust meaning that customer id here is foreign while here it's primary so foreign keys are underlined with a dash and primary with a full line or you can draw an arrow from this table to this table or from this relation to this relation okay you can draw arrows like this um, so the keys basically allows uh, the user to associate each line of an order with the relevant order and product so in cases when a foreign key is also part of a composite key, uh, frequently only the primary key role of the attribute is marked with a solid line. Okay. So the relation on the many side of a one-to-many relationship will have a foreign key that corresponds with the primary key of the relation on the one side. So what we are saying here is uh, that a single customer can be involved in multiple orders, right? So Smith, uh, like uh, customer number five is Smith. He has its address, lives in a city, state, has a postcode and so on. Can Smith order only a single product? No. So this Mr. Smith with ID five can be involved in multiple orders, okay? Um, but anytime we have like a M to N relationship like or a many to many relationship then this must be implemented via a separate relation which is sometimes called the intersection or the junction um, relation or table and the order line um, table is an example of such a relation that implements a many to many relationship. For instance, each order may involve several products and likewise each product could be involved in many orders. Okay, so order line is uh, an intersection table or a junction table. And these things will become clear when we uh, do the transformation from ER to, uh, what do you say? Uh, the relation model sorry so the relational data model includes several types of constraints or rules uh, limiting the acceptable values and actions whose purpose is to facilitate uh, maintaining the accuracy and integrity of the data in the database so the major types of integrity constraints are uh, domain constraints entity integrity and referential integrity Let's look at these, uh, so domain constraints. So what do these constraints mean? So they mean that all of the values that appear in a column of a relation must be from the same domain. So a domain, like I said earlier, is a set of values that may be assigned to an attribute. Uh, and all values, uh, must be from the same domain, okay? Let's look at an example. So customer ID um, uh, could be a character of size five, let's say. So no customer ID can be longer than five characters. So that's what the domain constraint is. Then entity integrity. So the entity integrity rule is designed to ensure that every relation has a primary key and the data values for that primary key are all valid. So in particular, it guarantees that every primary key attribute is non-null. And in some cases, a particular attribute cannot be assigned to a data value. So there are two situations in which, uh, for instance, this is likely to occur. So either there is no applicable data value or the applicable data value is not known uh, when values are assigned. 
suppose for example that you will uh, uh, fill out an employment form that has a separate uh, space reserved for a fax number so if you have no fax number you leave this space empty right because it does not apply to you or suppose that you are asked to fill in the telephone number of your previous employer right so these are all examples of entity integrity so referential integrity constraint is a rule uh, that maintains consistency among the rows of two relations or two tables so the rule states that if there is a foreign key in one relation either each foreign key value must match a primary key value in another uh, relation or the foreign key value must be null like there is no relationship for that record okay so domain definition like i said consists of the following components the domain name its meaning uh, data type uh, its size or length and allowable values or an allowable range if it's applicable so there are many ways to enforce domain constraints. Uh, one way is in uh, the SQL for creating tables, as we will see in, like in later chapters. Another way is for applications to enforce this prior to inserting data in the table. For example, like you can verify that uh, a date that is entered is legitimate. Okay. Uh, or you can verify that the unit price is a positive number like price cannot be negative for instance so these uh, enforcements can be made at data entry time also but usually it's done in uh, when you define the tables or when you create the tables integrity constraints are a uh, little more uh, you can say um, or seek more attention from us why because some tables are dependent on others it is important to control how data is to be uh, entered or deleted for instance uh, so the rule we already know so example is a delete rule uh, so these uh, like a rule can prevent data from being deleted when there is other data that's dependent on it. Got it? Uh, so for example, a customer uh, will not be or cannot be deleted uh, from the database if there exists orders Okay, so my system was giving that tension. So anyway, so let's get back to examples. So for example, a customer uh, will not be deleted from the database if there are existing orders that were generated by that customer, right? So the delete rules basically specify how such deletions can be controlled within the database. Either you can restrict, like don't allow the delete of the uh, parent site, if there are other like rows that are dependent on it or you can have a cascade type of rule that automatically delete the dependent side that correspond with the parent side as well or you can have another type of rule that set the foreign key in the dependent side to null if you're deleting from the parent side right uh, on the slide it says that it's not allowed for weak entities uh, and you know like from previous lectures what weak entities are so this rule is usually not allowed for weak entities for instance if you remember our example of uh, dependents like if you delete an employee the dependent has to be deleted with it right you cannot just set the dependent uh, to null if a person is working in a company and you have health insurance through that person for the dependents for the kids if the person leaves the company right you cannot have uh, the kids having the health insurance but their parent being null 
okay so this is that example that if in that case if it's a weak entity you have to delete it that record of kids health insurance from the system okay So in the relational diagrams, like I said earlier, arrows between foreign keys and pri primary keys depict these uh, referential integrity constraints. Okay, for instance, what are we saying here? So we are saying that a customer ID is dependent on a customer ID in the customer table. Similarly, in order line, order ID is dependent on the order table, while product ID is dependent on this attribute in this product table okay so when we create tables uh, referential integrity constraints are implemented with foreign key and uh, primary key references uh, for instance, uh, this is an example of a create table statement. We will look at these carefully uh, later when we get to SQL. But here what we can see is how a dependent table references uh, the parent table or the dominant table through the creation of something called a foreign key. Right. So what we are saying here is that this uh, attribute is a foreign key and it references this uh, attribute and another table okay which is this customer underscore t this table okay what these things mean and so on we will see when we learn about creating table in the sql lectures okay So the next several slides basically show us the mechanisms or mechanics of designing relational databases based on the ER and enhanced ER data models that we studied in the previous lectures. So as we saw, the database development lifecycle often involves like the first step is the conceptual model, which is ERs or enhanced ERs, and then using this to create this uh, logical model which is the relational database model so if you do a thorough job of developing the conceptual model it is fairly simple to convert that into a well-structured relational database so however if you just start by creating tables you could wind up and you will wind up with a database that is not well structured which requires you to fix these mistakes can this be done Yes, the process is called normalization, which will be discussed in the next lecture. Uh, but it's better that you have a good thorough design through the ER, and then you just take that ER and transform it into the relational model. So what is the actual process of uh, transforming these ERs into relations, right? So this is uh, like these are the first steps or the basic steps. So s regular entities become relations, right? That's the first thing. So you map a regular entity into a relation. So simple attributes map directly onto the relation. So they will have become the attributes of the relation itself. Composite attributes, if you have composite attributes, use only their simple component attributes. For instance, if address is composed of street address, zip code, and so on, so you use their component terms. You don't have the uh, composite. You list their component attributes. And multi-valued attribute becomes a uh, like a separate relation with a foreign key taken from the superior entity. So let's look at these examples, like what do they mean? So regular entity, so this was in the ER model for a customer, you list like this in the box. So all these become uh, attributes in the uh, customer relation, 
or the customer table and the same the keys are just transferred okay so very simple each attribute of the entity becomes a column of the resulting relation and the identifier of the entity becomes a primary key then when a regular entity type has a composite attribute only a simple uh, components like i said earlier are included so the figure shows a variant of uh, the example so now we have the address represented through the composite of street city and state so when this is mapped to the customer relation you can see there is no entry for address on its own but street city and state are represented on their own okay and then cust uh, zip code or postal code is separated as another uh, attribute a little bit complex although conceptually you can have uh, a composite attribute there is no such thing as a composite column or composite field so that's why uh, the component uh, attributes need to become individual columns okay so that is one thing to note that the customer address is now gone but street city state individually are present okay then the multi valued attributes in the er need to be converted to separate relations in this uh, conversion or logical database design why this is because there is no such thing as a multi valued attribute in relational databases okay uh so when the regular entity type contains a multi valued attribute uh two new relations are created okay so the first relation contains all of the attributes of the entity type except the multi valued attribute and the second relation contains the two attributes that form the primary key of the second relation so the first of these attributes is the primary key from the first relation uh and the second is the uh, like i said the multi valued attribute so example is shown in this figure so you have the employee uh, entry type up here with the attributes multi valued attribute is skill an employee can be skilled in carpentry plumbing and so on so it can, an employee can have multiple skills so when you translate this so our rule says um uh, except the multi valued attribute everything else goes in one relation so which is this top relation called employee and you make another table or another relation called employee skill in which the keys are the employee id which is taken from the parent table and part of the key is this attribute skill so employee id employee id is 1 mr smith lives at an address now mr smith can have carpentry mr smith can have uh, plumbing mr smith can have cooking right so mr smith along with this attribute form the key of this relation meaning in order for each row to be uh, unique both of these Uh, attributes need to be present or need to be looked at in unison mr smith mr smith mr smith repeated with cooking plumbing carpentry okay so cooking carpentry so those attributes themselves uh, are different but for mr smith if you have a mr john with the same again a loan skill cannot be taken as a key it has to be um considered together and then this is like just defining or showing you uh what is the foreign key in this table so it's primary and foreign at the same time okay so this attribute is primary in this table and it's a foreign key for referencing this table okay
Then how do you map weak entities? So they become a separate relation with a foreign key that is taken from the parent entity or the superior entity. Okay, let's look at the example. So recall that double lines depict weak entities and these are the identifying relationships. Your weak entity is dependent. Each dependent has a name. Again, composite, date of birth and gender. So how do you tra translate this? This will become a relation on its own. Dependent becomes a relation on its own as well with these simple column names. Okay, so let's look at the translation and it will become so middle initial last name employee ID. Uh, so first name, middle initial last name. Where are these coming from? First name, middle initial last name. Where is this employee ID coming from? So our rule states foreign key taken from the superior entity. Okay. So foreign key taken from the parent entity. So this is why you include that key in here as well. And all these become the composite primary key. Okay. So that key is taken from the superior relation and whatever primary key was already existing in this table. So here the dependent name was the key. So you list that as the key and uh, the parents relations key is also part of this uh, primary key. Okay. And then the other attributes of that relation. So what we are assuming is that each dependent of an employee must have a unique name, right? Otherwise the fields comprising the composite primary key would not be unique. Then how do you uh, map the relationships between two relations? So there are different rules for one-to-many types of relationship, many-to-many -many and one-to-one. -one. So in a one-to-many relationship, primary key on the one side becomes a foreign key on the many side. Then in a many-to-many, -many, you create a new relation. With the primary keys of the two entities as the primary key of this new relation. And in one-to-one -one types of relationships, primary key on the mandatory side becomes a foreign key on the optional side. Okay. So let's look at the examples of these. So we have uh, a one-to-many relationship. Okay. between customer and order meaning one customer can have or place multiple orders okay so for each one to m relationship first create a relation for each of the two entity types that are participating in the relationship so that's so we create for customer we create for order next we include the primary key attribute of the entity on the one side of the relationship as a foreign key in the relation that is on the many side of the relationship. So a mnemonic for you to remember is primary key migrates to the many side. So primary key migrates to the many side. So one to many. So this primary key is migrating to order which is shown here okay and then remember this rule that no null values will be allowed in the foreign key as well okay because of this uh, uh, mandatory this sorry mandatory minimum cardinality okay so based on these cardinalities uh, we can define rules as we design databases. 
but for now we are just mapping when we go to SQL then we'll, we can see these kind of constraints. Then next one, many-to-many uh, -many relationship. So suppose there is like a uh, binary many-to-many -many when we have binary meaning that uh, two relationships. Uh, so many employees can complete many courses. Mr. Smith can complete course on C++. Mr. David can complete course on Java. Uh, Mr. David can compose on, uh, complete course on C++ as well. Okay. So many employees can complete many courses. Okay. So what we do in a many-to-many -many relationship is that the relationship which is completes in this case becomes a new table on its own or a new relationship on its own. So you will have one relation of employee, one relation of course, one relation of this completes relationship. Taking keys from this side and this side and any attributes of its own look something like this so the course is this thing employee is this completes we renamed it called it certificate uh, you can call it completes as well name does not matter only that what attributes it's holding it's holding employee id from this side course id from this side and any attributes of its own meaning any attributes that the relationship had its own which is this one and then you'd list keys that this is a foreign key to this relation course id is coming from this relation and so on so this table is now the intersection or the join table Okay. So although one to one relationships are less common than one to M or M to N, they still occur. So what happens? Uh, so the, this ER diagram is is basically showing that a nurse could be in charge of at most one care center, right? and that each care center must have exactly one nurse in charge. So one-to-one -one relationship. So in a one-to-one -one relationship, the association in one direction is nearly always an optional one. Okay. So one direction is usually always optional, the other will be mandatory. Okay. So you could or you should include in the relation on the uh, optional side of the relationship a foreign key referencing the primary key of the side that has a mandatory constraint so this approach will prevent the need to store null values in the uh, foreign key attribute any attributes associated with the relationship itself are also included in the same relation as the one with the foreign key okay so let's see uh, what we just said so nurse ID so it's the mandatory side so mandatory side comes as is the optional side in a one-to-one -one relationship will have we said these attributes plus the attribute of the relationship which is date assigned and a foreign key referencing this nurse table so let's see if we have those four attributes. So those two attributes of the own, attribute of the relationship, and the foreign key referencing the mandatory side. Okay.
So as explained like in previous lectures, when a data modeler encounters a many-to-many -many relationship, he or she may choose to model that relationship as an associative entity in the ER diagram. Okay. So this approach is most appropriate when the end user can best visualize the relationship as an entity type rather than as an M to N relationship. So the first step to create is uh, three relations, one for each of those participating entity types and the third for the associative entity. So you can think, so remember from the last lectures I said that it does not matter if you have a M to N relationship or you make an associative entity. Why? Because both of these are translated the same or in a similar manner when you go to the relational model or when you start making tables of this. Okay, example is this thing. So this is the associative entity, right? So it's in the middle. So we have one relation for this one for product and the third for order line attributes any of its own which is ordered quantity and the keys taken from both sides just we did for a relationship right we just did that so the same thing so in the end coming to this relational model uh, the relational model translates the associative entity or the relationship in the same manner okay and the key is the composite of the two keys that are taken from these two uh, tables that were joined with it okay we're relating through it so in this case the associative entity has an identifier of itself. So when you translate, this identifier stays and the vendor ID and customer ID are only the primary keys, the, uh, sorry, the foreign keys. They don't need to be part of the primary key. For instance, like this. So attributes of its own plus the keys taken from the two uh, tables that it's joining and those are only the foreign keys hence dotted here okay so in a unary relationship uh, the entity type is mapped to a relation using the procedure that's described earlier in step one the next a foreign key attribute is added to the same relation so this attribute references the primary key in the same table, okay? Um, so this is like our called a recursive foreign key. So let's take a look at example. So what are we saying in this ER? We are saying that an employee can manage multiple employees, right? So one employee can manage multiple employees having the same kinds of attributes. So what you do is that you list these attributes in the table and uh, another attribute which becomes the foreign key referencing the same attribute or same primary key. The names again are made different just for uh, understanding purposes that one is the manager relationship uh, so there has to have a ma be a manager right so hence we just instead of calling it employee id we call it a manager id so transforming many to many um, unary type of uh, relationships so two relations are created one to represent the entity type in the relationship and an associative relation to represent the m to n relationship itself so the primary key of the associative relation consists of two attributes and the attributes both take their values from the primary key of the relation 
and any non-key attribute of the relationship is included in the associative relationship. For instance, uh, here, so this is showing like a bill of materials relationship among the items that are assembled from items or components, right? Uh, so the relationship is M to N because a given item can contain numerous components and numerous components can be part of uh, multiple items okay so what did we say we said that again this becomes a table on its own for the other uh, the primary again stays then you create a new relation with the attributes of the relationship if any and uh, uh, the foreign key right so foreign key referencing the same table again uh, item number is ref referencing this and there is a foreign key that's referencing this so now you have two foreign keys in this M to N type of uh, relationship. Mapping three-way or N array type of relationships. How do we do that? Again, these are the rules. Let's look at those. So now you have a this is a three-way relationship or three-way entity, associative entity. Uh, so patient becomes a table or patient becomes a relation treatment three and the fourth for patient treatment. So patient treatment will have it, any of its own attributes and the keys taken from each of these relations as part of the primary key and again those will be referencing as foreign something like this so the top three are tables themselves patient treatment which is that associative entity has its own attributes treatment date time and results date time as results and the keys taken from those relationships okay so note that like this ER diagram shows like a given physician can give a particular treatment to a particular patient and that this could have this could happen more than once and this is why like the primary key of this patient treatment um, needs more than just the three foreign keys to the physician. Okay. Treatment and patient. And that is why the date and time are part of the primary key. Right. So a patient can be treated. So patient ID can be same. Physician ID can be same. Treatment code can be same. But the date and time will have to be different. Uh, for the same kind of treatment results for instance so that is why these are part of the key itself also suppose later we were to create a table uh, that depends on patient treatment so if we did this then that table would have like a five field foreign key which is very cumbersome so the solution would have like a surrogate primary key if you have large composite primary keys this is an indicator that uh, uh, that that those kind of keys are preferable then how do you translate uh, super types subtypes again you can read these uh, i will just show you like how it happens in the slide so these uh, super type and subtype relationships are essentially one to one relationships so the rules that apply to these mappings will be very similar or are similar to the one-to-one -one relationship mappings right so these each of these will become tables on their own getting the keys from the parent as well okay 
So we have one, two, three, four for those four entities. Employee has its own hourly employees. Uh, attributes are uh, hourly rate. There is no employee number here. So it takes it from the parent entity. So it takes it from the parent entity. So that becomes the primary in this table. Similarly for these two. And since they're referencing, uh, they become references to the, or foreign keys referencing this employee's primary key. And again, you name them differently for hourly employee, call it age, employee number, and so on. Okay. And that is all for uh, today's lecture.